Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I got kind of somebody that, even though we're years apart, we're kind of like he's like a brother from a different mother, man. We have the same energy, uh, same outlook about helping people level up, and it's my really good friend here. I'm, I might butcher his last name a little bit, so forgive me. The last time I'll say it is Christopher Dedian, and he is just a rock star. He rocks the stage. He's a fantastic podcast. Uh, he's somebody that even... I, I respect immensely, and we are going to collaborate on a lot of things here moving forward, but Christopher is a professional speaker and peak performance expert who helps entrepreneurs, leaders, employees alike manage stress, increase productivity, and have more energy. He always gets his message across in a humoristic, charming, energetic, and passionate way, and after you watch this, go watch some of his YouTube videos. His sizzle reel is, uh, with him on stage is fantastic. He's some of this is so infectious. And I can't wait to bring him on here. And Chris, please, Christopher, please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast first. Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Okay. For, I mean, let me start off by answering that. So it's navy blue because honestly, it, I, I like blue and I like the naviness behind it because I feel like it's a bit more rich. And the, actually, my company's Colors Dead and Enterprises is it actually is. navy blue and gold. And there is that class behind it. I'm somebody that loves that, like, that approach. So that's the color that I would say. And before I'm packing that even more, Scott, man, thank you very much for that introduction. Oh, I am it. on the same wavelength as you. I know that <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun here and just give massive value to your audience. Yeah. So really appreciate that introduction. And I love that you said Navy blood. It's seven years in the United States Navy, you know, so, you know, go Rams, bro. You know, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's, <laughs> Rams. <laughs> let, let's unpack a little bit about, you know, how you got to where you are. Um, you know, maybe you, you should, I mean, you're not old, but you're maybe younger years on that journey to get to where you are right now, where you're really helping people level up, Chris. So honestly, we're going to have to take it back when I was eight years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. So for people who don't know what dyslexia is, is learning disability has to do with reading and writing. And when my parents figured that out, they came and they told me at eight years old, I'm going to take you out of the specialized school, uh, sorry, the the school that you're in and put you in a specialized school that's going to help you. And at that point, eight years old, all I understand is I'm leaving my friends and I'm going to a special school in air quotes over here. And you don't want that. Mm. And as I got into that school, I started realizing that, oh, my God, I'm not alone with learning disabilities. There's hundreds of kids like me. And throughout that process of understanding what methodologies, tools and habits I need to learn as an individual, I started flourishing in the education system that we were given. And at the end of my high school year, just like everybody we look at what's next. What's the next step? What are you going to study, right? And the first thing that came to my mind is I want to be a lawyer. I like wearing nice clothes. I like having conversations. You are GQ, and bro. At, okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So as I went to, into like researching that career, I realized like 85% of the job is reading and writing. Being dyslexic, I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. So I looked for careers that don't have a lot of reading and writing. And the first thing that came to me is fireman. I'm like, oh my God, let me be a fireman, give back to my community, the adrenaline, the boys, the fire truck. So I started working into that field at Pratt Whitney Canada to become an industrial fireman. And Scott, at that point, I realized that that wasn't my life calling. The universe was preparing me to be an entrepreneur my whole life. And I was repressing it, calling it out of practicality. Scott, I remember when the teacher used to come into the classroom and be like, Hey kids, put yourself in team. That, that even before she finished the word three, I had my head up and I was looking for who writes the best, who reads the best. Let me put a team together, delegate the work, and get the grades together. Delegation one on one, entrepreneurship. It, I remember in college when I used to fail, I used to go see the professor afterwards and I used to negotiate my grade up. I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. This is what I meant. Negotiation one on one. So through that process of being a young adult and realizing I'm meant to be an entrepreneur, I fell in love with real estate. So I went into becoming a real estate broker. And I know, Scott, that you have this background and a lot of your audience is entrepreneur. The first year and a half of being a broker, I legit paid to be a broker. Like it was not easy. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point with the resilience and the prospecting and how I built the business, it started blowing up for me. Like I was succeeding in the traditional form of what society tells us success is. I was a young man with the suit, with the car, with the condo, with all that, the money and all that stuff. And I'm almost done my rant here, but kind of going to give you an brother. idea of how You're I end up where I'm at. So my speech therapist at that point had given me a call to ask me a question about a real estate property. After a few minutes, she's like, Chris, how's it going for you? 
And like you just guys saw, I'm very able to go on rants. And I went on a rant. I'm like, oh my God, everything's going great. So on and so forth. After a few minutes of my rant, she's like, I'm the keynote speaker at this event put together by the Learning Disability Institute of Quebec. I would love for you to come and tell us how you are a successful dyslexic entrepreneur. I'm like, beautiful. I would love to do that. Scott, that same evening, she sends me an email in the subject letter in big cap. It's written, Chris, I don't think you should do this speech because there's still a lot of negative misconception of what learning disabilities are and what dyslexia is, and oh. you might lose some clients. Exactly. Now, I knew that she was coming from a place of love. She was coming from a place of protection. Mm -hmm. I read her an email saying, you know what? I need to do this speech, and I'll call you Monday to let you know why. Monday rolls around, give her a call, and I'm like, Bridget, if I don't do the speech, I'm not helping the kids that are on the school benches right now. I'm not helping the next generation. I'm not helping my future kids because this is something hereditary. I would be fake. I'm not fake. I need to do the speech. Furthermore, if ever there's a client that doesn't want to work with me because I'm dyslexic, those aren't clients that I want to work with. Thank and she's like, oh my God, yes, 100%. I'm like, that's exactly what I thought. I just wanted to come from you. So then I'm like, all right, cool. How many people are going to be at this event? She's like, about 200. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, Scott, I've never done a speech in my life at this point. All right. This is in 2017. <laughs> I got ready for this speech, did not know what to expect. Yeah, you're uh, laughing because you kind of know where this I've is going to go. I've been there, dude. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's something. Now, right. I opened the door, Scott. I look left and right, and there isn't 200 people. It's more like 1,000 people. Now, at this point, my heart is racing, like beat out of my chest. I am just dripping sweat. I'm like, what sure. the F did I get myself into sure. over here? I'm seeing like professors after professors go on stage and they're like giving these amazing speeches. And I'm like, what the heck? And then they're like, Chris, can you please come on stage and tell us your story? Now, the best way that I could describe this moment for me was this almost out of body experience, this divine moment of like the universe, our creator was preparing me my whole life for that moment. He was. And from that yeah. moment on, I knew that I had to be a high performance, peak performance speaker and coach. Yeah. People stood up, gave me standing ovations, laughing, crying the whole night throughout that speech. And that's how my speaking career started. Love there was it. the Ministry of Education that was there. I started doing a work with them for reforming the education system of Quebec. Uh, there was teachers and, and uh, principals there, and they started inviting me to go speak in schools. And that's how my whole career shifted. And then once I realized that's what I need to do, I stopped everything that I was doing in brokerage, went into this career, and everybody thought I was crazy because I'd done a successful right. real estate business at a young age. And then I'm like, no, nah, I'm following my passion within this. So that's the arc of how I ended up being a professional speaker and coach. I love it, man. So let, let's dig, we'll dig into a little bit of coaching here. So when, when you're starting to work with somebody, you know, one on one, what would be your process and protocol, if you don't mind answering? and helping them find their blind spot in that discovery. Okay, great question. So first and foremost, before doing that, I just want to clarify what type of clientele that I work with because I'm very sure. specific in the people that I, I, I support do. in that regard. So I work with entrepreneurs that were solopreneurs that started to become successful and started becoming a CEO. So that means they're hiring people, they're having some people and they're having some success. Maybe they're in the beginning six figures, they're trying to go to that seven, eight figures, but they feel like there's a couple of distinctions that they're missing. That's the clientele that I work with. They're already very high achieving individuals. Now, what I do and the analogy I give is I don't work with Honda Civics to get them into Ferraris. I work with Ferraris to get them into F1s. Sure. Now, this clientele how I go about it, my methodology is I have four main pillars within my coaching ideology with Dead End Enterprises. And the first pillar that we look at together is our limiting beliefs. I don't care who you are as an individual, guy, girl, North American, Asian, African, every sure. single individual has limiting beliefs. Absolutely. And these limiting beliefs have been given to you when you were born, through where you were raised, your parents, your own thought processes. And then we look at what are the ones that are really disempowering you. Let's take them out, reframe them and look at having the positive ones. The right. second thing we look at is we create a specific blueprint plan for their success. This is very custom. This is like the one-on-one -on -one executive coaching that I do. We look at putting a plan because really success is extremely measurable. It's mm. science-based. Sure. If you do the certain steps, you're going to get there. Now, once that's done the second pillar, we're going to the third pillar. Once the, the, the process is in place, then we have to put the systems and processes so you could actually succeed on those goals. Because setting the goals, setting the blueprint is one thing, but if you're not acting on it, then you're not going to succeed. So we want to make it in a way that's almost a no-brainer. So when you wake up, 
your gym shoes are there, then you don't think about, oh, should I go for a run? You get out of bed and you put your shoes in, you put your feet in your shoes. Very good. If a client calls you, you have a process of like this sale comes in, give it to this person, delegate sure. this, the process is in place. And then Love finally, it. the last thing that I look at, the last pillar, which probably one of my favorite ones, is we go into approaching on massive value, then massive impact, which will create massive income. And this is the important part. A lot of entrepreneurs think it's the other way around. They have to make massive in, uh, income, then they'll bring value to the society, which go. is not at all my ideology. Right. I believe in capitalism with empathy. That's the honest approach. So you have to bring massive value first, and then everything that you're doing will give you an abundance of money and success. But the value and impact is always number one. And that's the thing that I work with my top end CEOs. Love that, man. I love it. So when these, when maybe you're still kind of in that discovery period and making sure it's the right fit, an entrepreneur, a solopreneur that is ramped up and they're trying to get that F1 status. Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Oh, that's a great question. Honestly, one thing that I don't get asked often, but I always ask, and when somebody tells me, Chris, how do you pick your coaches? This is what I would want to get asked is who is your coach? Okay. If somebody wants to work with somebody, you have to figure out who their coach is. If you're hiring a coach that doesn't have a coach, run away, run away. Don't even like just run away. Yeah. They don't believe in their own product. I have eight coaches and mentor in different areas of my life. Too, I have my, yep. that, that's what it is. Yeah. And honestly, you look at like the framework. If you have one coach, you're probably in the six figures. You sure. have three or more coaches, you're probably in a million. And if you have like 10 plus coaches, you're probably flirting and getting into like the eight sure. figure range. Yeah, a couple That's the actual stat. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Dude, I so love that's I one love thing that, that, I, would, that I would like. I love that you said that because I mean, any like you look at if you follow American football, like Bill Belichick, his coaching lineage goes back and back to, you know, per, ourselves and whatnot. Look at his lineage he's passing down with a coach that he has. They've been coached up through the ranks to get to where they're at. I love, love that you said that. So have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. Okay, let's Which get one? that DeLorean with Marty McFly. All right, let's go back okay. to the 18-year-old Christopher. What kind of knowledge nuggets, we call them here at Time to Shine today, what kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on the 18-year-old Christopher? Not so much to change anything, Chris, but to maybe help him level up, last through, and shorten that learning curve a little bit. Great question. Honestly, if talking about would I change anything, I wouldn't because I'm mm -hmm. truly proud of the man that I am today. And I'm really looking forward to who I'm going to become within somebody within society and bring positivity. So all those failures, all those things were necessary. Sure. And I believe in that the universe doesn't make mistakes. It's divine purpose. There's like this divine timing with everything. But the one thing I would kind of tell them is lean more to your faith. Yes. And what I mean by this is understand that there's this process and it's not fake it until you make it, but it's faith it until you make it. Oh my gosh, that dude, that is bad ass, dude. Yeah. Faith it. So just write that down squad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that, that's something I use as something I utilize quite often. Cause that's what I realized. Like, I think mean, you're not, you don't need to fake it. You need to sure. faith it. Like before it happens, you have to believe it happens dude, in your I mind. So and I could actually, that, Chris. Oh my bro, God. Please do. Don't, it's not stealing. It's sharing. Because you're going to hit an audience bro. that I can't hit. And I, yeah. an audience that you don't hit. It's dude, about and, just sharing. And I will so, give yeah, you please. cred and a shout out every time I say that. And, and Chris, let me ask you something. How do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date. Hopefully it's a long ways down the road. On your tombstone, how do you want Chris's dash remember? <laughs> That's crazy. Honestly, a great son, a great brother, a great father, and a great philanthropist. It's so crazy that I'm saying this because I, I didn't even put entrepreneur there. And if you think about it, I'm already all of those. Now it's how much can we amplify that? Sure. I'm actually, I'm already, so I'm not a father yet, but in my mind, I'm already yeah. in, like in the you next see, couple of years, I, I will that, get to man. that. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's Manifesting awesome. it. But I'm Love like, it. yeah, if I could just be who I am at a higher level, then I'll be, I'll be happy. Like right. true, true, true joy. I love yeah. that, man. Thank you for being transparent with that. And so what do you think people misunderstand about you the most? <laughs> Great question. Bro, you're asking some good, solid questions over here. My level of confidence is so effing high 
that there can be a perception of cockiness, but sure. it is not at all cockiness. Right. The reality is, and I know that I'm saying this, Scott, because I know that you understand this. Mm -hmm. It's when you're so centered as an individual that you know what your life's purpose is, like what you're put on this planet. Dude, you said it before, man. Divine purpose, resonate baby. at such a yeah. high level. Yeah. That's what it is. And reality is, Scott, here's, here's one thing I even go like even further. I think this has nothing to do with Christopher. It has nothing to do with Scott. We're all here, a vehicle of the universe's work. And the vehicle of the universe is using our vehicle to get the message across to the people that we need. So it's not even a me. It's like Christopher Derian is a given name. It's about allowing the universe to take my tools, my knowledge, and share with the others. And love the it. other people are doing the same thing with me. So we're all in it together. That's the way I look at it. I love it, man. So what, then what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Great question. Will I be able to accomplish everything that I'm dreaming and manifesting in the time frame that I want? <laughs> Which is so, yeah. and I know you're laughing because you have that same thing. This dude, is what you and I, are, I work yeah, again, with. Dude, we're separated we're similar. in this universe, brother. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. We're, so that's what, what it is. What is Chris's definition of a life well lived? Okay. Great question once again, brother. I've asked myself this because I went through the process of like, you know, attaching my success to outside things such mm -hmm. as money, such as cars, such as this, that, and the other, especially honestly being in the brokerage industry and succeeding quite young, when you sure. get money at a young age and <laughs> I think I'm somebody that's very stable, it mm -hmm. still affects you. It mm -hmm. really does. So I had to go through that process of like understanding this. And this is what it comes down to for me in my regards to success and happiness. If I wake up every single day and I give my 110% and I learn something new, I have succeeded. That's wow. my full definition. Now, here's the thing, Scott, can I wake up every single day and give my 110%? The reality is no, right? There's ups sure. and downs, which Absolutely. is what human beings are, which I believe our imperfection is our perfection. But even at that moment that I'm less higher percentage, less effective, if I could give my 110% at that moment of like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be lazy today, but you know what? I'm going to give my 110% to be lazy today right. and I can learn something from it. Yeah. I'm the one that's controlling my success. It's not an outside binary thing. It's not like if once I become a millionaire, I'm successful. Once I get married, I'm successful. Once I have a certain body fat percentage, I'm successful. Everything that I correlate my main success to is something that I could control every single day, which is waking up, giving 110% and learning something new. Dude, I love that you're writing your story like that, man, because I'm a firm believer in that is my, my perfect day is, you know, I, and I make a new year's resolution every, every year since 09, man. And one is to make someone smile every day. No matter what, I, I just won, you know, I'll get one my day there. And secondly, unless I've hurt you or disrespected you, I don't really care what you think about me at all. And that's like in that, and you need that in what we do, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you have to have it because there's, there's going to be the haters out there and, and people that are going to want to, you know, kind of stomp you down a little bit, but all right, squad, we are going to take my good friend, Christopher here through our leveling up lightning round, just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today. Podcast Varsity Squad, we are back. And Chris, Christopher, you and I are going to talk one day, 15, 20 minutes on each one of these questions. But you got five seconds, and I mean five seconds with no explanations. You ready to rock? Let's go. All right, here we go. Chris, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? It's not without, it's within. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your, your success. Waking up at 4 a.m. Monday to Friday. Wow, that's fantastic. So you see me walking down the street. Man, like Fergie doesn't really look like he's feeling it. He's in his doldrums. Other than the good book, the Bible or whatnot. But what book would you hand me? I wouldn't hand you a book. I would teach you the ideology of becoming a reader for the rest of your life. Love it. Love it. Nicknames growing up? Uh, Chris, I guess. There you Nothing go. Like yeah, about, nothing, nothing specific. No problem. Your most commonly used emoji when you text. Actually, let me take that step back. M all my friends right now call me boss. Boss. That's all just, right, boss. Yeah. That's... We got to move quick through these, brother. I'm strict. All honest. right, go for it. So what's the uh, mo most common emoji when you text? The smiley face with the eyes that are kind of like inside like this, like the really big smiley Love face. Love and it. maybe the pounding at the same time, like there you go. fist bump. Chest checkers are monopoly. Chess all the way. Got it. Let's go. Favorite, go to ice cream flavor. Uh, uh, wow, this is okay. Uh, cookie, uh, cookie dough. 
Love it. Love it. There's a sandwich named the Dededian. I butchered it again, but there's a sandwich named after you. What's on that sandwich? It would be chicken, lettuce, salad. Uh, it would be bacon. Yeah. And like, I think awesome. that's what it would be. Glad what a nice man- Italian uh, uh, bun. I love that you put some man candy on there. Got to have bacon. Favorite charity and organization you like to give your time or money to? So everything that has to do with learning disabilities and dyslexia. Uh, everything that has to do with like, educational reform. Yeah. Love it. Last question. Best decade of music, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Listen, man, I grew up in the 90s. So I have to say 90s. Beautiful. Love it, man. Love the 90s, too. What? How, how can we find you, Christopher? You can find me and everywhere on social media at Christopher Didian. Like you mentioned, my YouTube channel is one that I'm quite often on, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Instagram as well. My team is really strong on those aspects. And just go check out my website if I could support you with anything at DedianEnterprises.com. I love that. And squad, it, all of those are in the show notes. Uh, make sure you go there and, and also look out for some collaborations between me and Christopher here in the future. And Christopher, if you don't mind, please leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action. on. If you want to be a high achieving individual, it comes down to many aspects. But the first one, which I think is probably the foundation, is massive amount of clarity. You have to go within. You have to be clear on who you are, what your goals are, what your ambitions are, and who you are as a person. And that will build that foundation to everything else. So massive level of clarity. I love that. And love that. And squad, we just got really a free masterclass from a good friend here, Christopher. You know, diagnosed with dyslexia at at eight years of age, went to the school, and and he started kind of putting the pieces together. He really found his strengths. He, He wasn't he was not fake. And, and that's what I love about Chris. This is him off the, off the mic as well. He's who he is. He's somebody that I believe is planting trees that he'll never sit in the shade of. He's always paying it forward. He's always being a go-giver. You know, if you're an entrepreneur out there or a solopreneur and you've gotten some success and you want to level up that game, please let me make a warm introduction to, to Christopher. And again, he, he turns you know, your Bentleys into F1s. And that's who my guy is. He has four pillars with, mm-hmm. you know, he goes through limiting beliefs. He puts you together a specific blueprint. He puts the systems and processes in action, okay? And then massive value and impact will equal income. It's not the other way around. You put the massive value and impact and you, that money will come. You know, he's a capitalist with empathy. And I love, love that because that aligns straight with me. You know, if you're working with a coach, make sure you ask the coach what their lineage is or who's coaching them at that. It does make a difference because you'll know Mm -hmm. who they're coming from. He wants you to live with a divine purpose, lean into your faith and faith it till you make it. He's somebody that's going to slide across home plate, bumped, bruised, bruised, but he's going to know he's going to be a great, he is a great son, a future, awesome father, a fantastic brother and a philanthropist. And I love, love that about him as well. You know, he's a vehicle of the universe. To, we all are vehicles of the universe to get our message across. We all have a story. Get out there and tell it, okay? You know, he also reminded us that imperfection is perfection. Work continuously every day to level up. And it's not what's without, it's what's within. And that also, you know, high achievers, you know, have really good clarity. And that's what my good friend Christopher has. You know, he levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's earned his varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. I love his guts squad. I cannot, again, cannot wait to collaborate with him. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon, Christopher. Have a, thank you so much for coming on, brother. My brother was such a pleasure. Thank you very much. An awesome recap at the end. You bet, brother. We'll chat soon. Bye now.